Okay, good. Troubleshooting in front of a large audience. <laughs> Ho hopefully, it will, it will not happen with my code. Thank you for the introduction. So I'm going to be talking today. It's a bit more technical. There's been a lot of talk on, on, on portals and experience, which is great. I, I found it really amusing. And, and you know, uh <laughs> 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 I'm more of a techie guy, right? Uh, but, but there's an interesting part that, that I, I always ha have an issue with large teams in large projects I'm working with which is how do you marry an API design with the implementation of that API and making sure that your, document, your document, documentation doesn't go out of date, right? Because you may have a great portal, but then if your developers start using that portal, right, to consume the API and then, you know, there's no alignment, you're going to run into issues as well. So uh, uh, microservices is a very, you know, uh, I would say uh, uh, the new normal when it comes to developing scalable applications. So I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to do a demo using Apiary to do precisely this. Do a cracking API design that you can then generate some responsive uh, HTML that then you can incorporate into a portal. But then I'm going to build a microservice and then I'm going to apply some techniques to make sure that the two are actually consistent. Uh, so hopefully you'll find that interesting. So before I move on, true or fiction? Thoughts? <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, true, I found this picture. <laughs> <laughs> so horrors of engineering, I would say, right? So that's kind of uh, uh, what I'm getting to, right? So uh, yeah, I don't know where that is, but uh, I thought it was close enough. Right, so uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, well, you already uh, gave an introduction, so I'm just going to be very quick. Uh, I'm a chief architect and also, and also an API evangelist in Capgemini, so I'm working with numerous customers across Europe and the UK. I'm also, I've published a book recently on uh, an implementation we did for a customer in Sweden. I'm writing another book that's going to be available mid next year about end-to-end -end API management, covering API design, API developer experience, but also the, you know, the ins and outs of uh, in, uh, gateways and all the life cycle. Uh, literally, I presented last week in San Francisco a, a, a talk uh, no, uh, named The Seven Deadly Sins of API Design, really, uh, Good presentation, you're gonna have fun. Uh, I recommend that, that you read it. Uh, the slides will be available. Right, so uh, now starting with my talk, uh, APIs, I always compare them with doors, right? Because they provide access to functionality and information, could be internally or externally, right? Uh, but what doesn't matter for microservices is a, is a big question, right? Why do I care about API design for microservices? I guess the first answer is, well, because microservices are APIs. Yes, they are loosely coupled services that are built based on bounded context and they have their own data and they are running typically in our containerized Kubernetes platform and all that stuff, but they do expose an endpoint. They are APIs. It's a way to implement an API. I typically use the analogy, APIs enable the business, microservices enable APIs, right? Uh, and also, in microservices architectures, uh, you might, um, might not know, right, that there's a strong emphasis on domain-driven design, which is taking basically a business top-down approach to create, uh, I think you mentioned, Tony, from HMRC, you guys mentioned your ubiquitous language, right? So you use this type of techniques to model the business, right, and then drill it down to the point where you can define a bounded context, which is basically a, you know, a bounded set of functionality that then you can use to implement your microservice. So it's pretty much, you know, pure play design. So it's extremely relevant then to take a step back and, and think about how you're going to design your microservices. And by the way, doors can really be badly designed, right? <laughs> so microservices are exactly the same. So you can get it really, really bad if you don't think about this up front. Sorry, this is a bit cheesy. But this is, uh, uh, I think Lorna uh, earlier was talking about uh, API spec design first. It's exactly the same. I always encourage to always start with design. Think about your problem statement, think about your business domain, and then drill it down. But what does that mean in practice, right? So let me get into a little bit more detail. So it's really not rocket science. I think if you think about the traditional way to do end-to-end -end, uh, uh, API lifecycle development, What's really different in this approach is that you incorporate the try, you know, the, the, the experimentation of the API, a feedback loop as early as possible in your development lifecycle. What it means is that as you are doing design, you are 
as soon as possible creating mocks, right? API mocks that you can share with your audience, whoever is your audience, right? So you establish feedback loops. And those feedback loops will help you to iterate through our design until you get it right. And once you get that design right, you go into the implementation. However, in the, in the, I come from an SOA background, SOAP, Whistles, XMLs were mentioned a few times, right? In the past, the whistle was typically quite coupled to the service itself. In the new world, it's not so much the case, right? You can have a RAML file, you can have a Swagger, you can have an API blueprint, you can have a Waddle, right? you name it, right? But then the service might not be, comp it's not coupled to that uh, specification. So there could be a disconnect. You can have the best design ever and the best documentation ever, but then if that documentation is not you know, followed through or the developer doesn't interpret it the right way, you can end up with a service that doesn't match your spec, right? Your documentation, which means that later on you're gonna have issues and you're going to waste, waste a lot of time rolling that out into production. So the whole idea is that you push it to the beginning but then incorporate some techniques that I'm gonna show er, uh, later to validate design versus implementation. Now, Apiary, uh, it's, a, you know, it's a pure play API design first tool. Uh, it was bought by Oracle uh, February the last year, but the team in Apiary is pretty much you know, the same, uh, and they're still doing a very, very good job. Uh, the reason I like Apiary is because it really covers the whole, the, the, the whole API design cycle, from design, whether you want to use API Blueprint, which I'm gonna demonstrate in a second, or you want to use Swagger, API, open API specification, uh, uh, but also it has features like, for example, I heard uh, earlier today, sometimes you have compliance checks. How do you have consistency across many APIs? You may have a team of 100 de uh, uh, developers. How do you make sure, or, or, or uh, technical writers, uh, uh, how do you make sure that you're using the same semantics, that you're using plural nouns, right? Or you're using British English, or American English, or dodgy English like mine, right? Uh, <laughs> Long, long story short, right, uh, what you want to make sure is that, you know, you have consistency during the design phase in a centralized way using, you know, whichever notation you prefer, but then you have the capability to create mocks very, very quickly so you can share it with your audience, they can try it out, they can give you feedback, you can then iterate, as I said before, you can improve your API design, but also you want to be able to validate later on and perhaps incorporate that validation as part of your uh, uh, CI CD or continuous integration cycle, and therefore make sure that end-to-end -end your design follows through consistently, right? So uh, I think I'm doing good in time. Uh, so my demo is going to be like this. Uh, I'm going to design an API in Apiary, and then I'm gonna try it, yeah? I'm gonna try it myself, but you can give me feedback too, and I'll try to improve it, yeah? No, no, I'm not gonna do that, but... It, it, <laughs> uh, I'm going to then build, a micro, it's already pre-built, but I'm gonna build a microservice using Node.js. It's a very, very simple one, so if you're not technical, it's, it's okay, it's not very, very uh, detailed. But then, most importantly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to validate that microservice to make sure that it matches the design that I would have done beforehand. I will not have time to do the other parts. I typically do the end-to-end -end demo, but that's an hour session, so, so I don't have that, that, that time right now. But I think it's enough to, to, to make my point and, and for you to uh, take uh, some good feedback away. So let me uh, go to my editor. Sorry, that's the wrong screen. Right. That's me with her. <laughs> okay, so if you go to apiary.io, right, uh, you can, there's three type of accounts. You can open a free account, which gives you access up to five developers. Yes, Oracle has free products, probably the only one. Uh, still, <laughs> uh, I'm, we're pushing. There's a few of us that are pushing really hard to keep it that way. So hopefully it will continue. Hopefully. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so you, you, can, you have uh, then uh, a standard, which you have a lot of features, one not all, and then you have enterprise, and then you get like the style guides I mentioned before where you can kind of automatically check uh, compliance. And, uh, and, I'll, and I'll show you that in a second, right? So I'm already logged on, half time, yes, yes, no pressure. Right, uh, so I've logged on, there's a few APIs in there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna create an API, call it, you know, orders demo. I'm gonna create, I, I'm gonna add it, I'm, go, I'm adding it as part of the team because I want to validate it along with the team. So you see that I have two issues already. 
He doesn't like the fact that I'm using uh, I'm not using camel case, right? Well, that's all right. Uh, I, I don't mind that. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to cheat because I don't have much time. Right, let me zoom this up. One second. So I have an APA blueprint here, right? Sorry, that's another one. It's this one. Right, I'm creating a very simple orders API. And now it's valid. Now, let me show you something that I'm sure you will like. If I make this a singular, for example, it will complain. And the reason it's complaining is because I have a style sheet here, right, that's saying use Perl now. Now, this is configurable. You can change this. If I untick it and save it, it will not complain anymore. So it will, it will see it as, ah, well, I think I'm locked out or something. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, Pro names, it saves already. Yeah, that's fine. R real demos, that's what happens, yeah. So, uh, so now I shouldn't complain anymore about that one. Or I need to log out and in. Let me just refresh. Yeah, so it's not complaining anymore. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I like pearls, but sometimes it doesn't work out as it was said before. Now, what I'm gonna do now very quickly, right, because I wanna show you the next part of the demo. I'm going to connect this to my GitHub account. Yeah. And basically what I'm doing is I'm syncing with my GitHub account where I have my microservice code, right? So the API blueprint file is going to my GitHub account right now. And then locally in my machine, I'm going to do the, the validation using the tooling I mentioned before. So I'm already, uh, I'm already here. Yeah. Yeah. So you updated my local file. So it's just exactly the same API blueprint you saw, but I have it now in, uh, uh, in API blueprint, uh, locally in my editor, right? Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start my microservice. Yeah. So if I go to localhost orders, right, it's just serving a very, very, very simple uh, response equivalent to, to the one I showed before. But I'm going to break this, right, because then my, my, my test is going to pass, right? So I'm going to call this order x and y. And, and when I do the test, it's not going to like it because it's not consistent with my design. So I'm going to open another shell. Hopefully you see this a bit more. Yeah, a little bit. So there's a tool called Dread. And this is where Apiary, I really, really like this feature. So as part of my API itself, if I go to tests, I get this beauty here, which is an open source utility that you can use without actually purchasing Apiary. So what Dread is going to do when I run this uh, locally, it's a Node.js based tool, when I run it locally, all it's going to do is configure Dread to test uh, whichever I tell it to test. So it's looking for the local API blueprint file, which I already have, that's why I did the synchronization before. Uh, I'm not doing that. It already knows that that's my endpoint locally because I've, I've, I did it beforehand, uh, before I did this demo. I'm using Node.js. I don't wanna do continuous integration right now, and off you go. So if I run Dread, it should fail. It should give me an error because I changed, you know, the, the, the payload on the response doesn't match the design I did. Yeah, so let's do the test. Hopefully it will fail this time. If it succeeds, then Okay, come on. Okay. Ah, I didn't start my microservice. Ah, it is listening. Sorry. I'll try one more time, otherwise I'll just skip and, and continue with my presentation because I don't have the time. Well, live demos, there you go. So in theory, <laughs> In theory, what this is doing, right, or will do, or, or uh, ah, I might be in the wrong place, actually. That's why. No, I am in the right place. Yeah, okay, let, I'm gonna try one last time, creating the direct file again. 
Okay, let's see that. Yeah, five minutes. Ah, okay, I'm good. That's enough to troubleshoot. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. I did this like ten times before doing the demo. <laughs> right. Let 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 let's let's let it there. Let's see if it works at some point. But long story short, what I should get is basically an error saying, you know, Dread doesn't like the response because it's not matching my payload. And then what you're able to do with that feedback is you should be able to go change your code, fix it, and off you go. But it's not working, so apologies for that. Right, so let me go back to my presentation. So there's, there's three key benefits that I want to summarize when you do API design first. The number one, and I think it's a very important uh, benefit when you're doing large implementations uh, uh, in big projects, is you avoid a lot of rework because you're finding issues, right, early in the life cycle. And if you use tools like Red when it works, you're able to you know, uh, uh, also make sure that your implementation matches your design. Uh, the second one is you're really able to do parallel development. If you're mocking your APIs, uh, in Apiary, uh, then you're able to share those small endpoints, right? So your developers can, your UI developers can start interacting with that API as your backend developers are implementing your APIs using Node.js or whatever. But most importantly, is make sure, making sure that your documentation stays up to date, right? And doesn't go uh, irrelevant, right? Because the developer would have fixed a bug, right? But then he forgot to, to test it uh, uh, or, or make sure that it didn't disalign with the, the, the API design that has already been published to your portal. I think these are really key benefits. Uh, also, I just want to share a few more tools. The, uh, if you go to apiblueprint.org, there's a lot of tooling that you can use, like Snowboard, for example, to gener generate HTML on the back of API Blueprint files, or Aglio, which is kind of doing the same. Uh, API Transformer is a great utility. Uh, the reason I, I like API Blueprint, for example, is because it's less technical than Swagger. And we're doing some projects uh, uh, with some large clients where you know, we have less technical people doing the design of the API itself, and they find API Blueprint less complex. However, when we're doing the implementation, sometimes we prefer Swagger. So we use API Transformer to convert from Blueprint to Swagger, and it really works. We're doing that quite a lot, and we're having very little issues. Uh, and lastly, there is an Atom Grammar for API Blueprint. It's, uh, I'm use, it, it's what I'm using in my, in my ID. Um, I think that's it from my side. Uh, I guess I should say that I'm also recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, do I have any time for questions? Um, no? Sorry, no time for questions. Thank you. <laughs>